I'm Matthew Prince and I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Cloudflare. Can you tell us what Cloudflare does? Cloudflare is trying to take the resources that were previously only available to the internet giants, companies like Google, and make them available to anyone who's trying to put content or applications or mobile apps online. So previously, if you wanted to make sure that your, your website, let's say, was fast and safe and available all around the internet, um, you had to be someone like Google that had literally data centers uh, scattered around, around the world in order to make sure that it would be accessible, stay online, even in the face of major attacks. What Cloudflare has done is made that same technology available to anyone in the world, anywhere in the world, and made it available at an extremely affordable price in an extremely easy to use way. These distributed denial of service attacks are increasingly happening, right? What is happening um, in that world? Why are DDoS attacks increasing? Um, part of it's about politics, right? And then also about financial gain. There are four main reasons why an attacker will launch a denial of service attack, which is sort of the modern equivalent of kind of a sit-in or, or a protest where you're just trying to fill a customer's website or web application up with so much illegitimate content that the legitimate customers can't get through. So the four reasons we've seen are, uh, first of all, political. Another is in terms of, of just competition. So we've seen examples of where one day spa owner will actually attack another day spa owner. We are increasingly seeing extortion based attacks. Traditionally, uh, those attacks had been uh, launched against e-commerce providers that had about $100,000 in, uh, in monthly revenue um, that were sort of flying below the radar screen. Uh, increasingly, there's been a series of attacks against slightly larger providers. The last reason that we see these attacks get launched are just you know, kids that are bored. Um, and they launch an attack just to kind of get street, street cred or sort of prove themselves in. And that's actually um, that's a real problem that they're, you know, any 15 year old kid can basically bring almost any big bank to its knees uh, online. And that's why you need something like Cloudflare in order to be that shield that helps protect you. And part of your credo is that you guys will protect anyone, right? You, th there haven't been customers that you've turned away. We, you know, every uh, tier of our service had some denial of service attack protection, um, but we often find ourselves on two sides of a conflict. So, for example, in the last Middle East conflict, uh, we had uh, both the Israeli Defense Force and the Al-Quds Brigade, which is the militant arm of the Palestinians in Gaza, both using us for DDoS uh, mitigation on both sides of the conflict. And so that ends up happening uh, actually quite often where uh, two sides that will disagree will both use us in order to stay online. And from our perspective, you know, the internet that sort of, the when the internet is at its best, it says that anyone with any idea can reach a global audience. And so we don't pick favorites uh, or pick what political party should or should not be able to have a voice. Uh, instead, we say, if you're putting content online, then we'll make sure that just some bully can't knock it offline, even if we disagree you know, on an individual level with what that content is. Is it possible to have a website now without a digital bodyguard like Cloudflare, or are you just going to get taken down? Um, <laughs> you know, it's, they're obviously, you know, it's only 5% of the, of the web uses us today. Um, and even though we're growing very quickly, a lot of people uh, don't get attacked. Um, but over time, the challenge is it's become so easy to launch those attacks and the resources that you need to defend yourself need to be so substantial that it's very difficult if you have one disgruntled customer or one disgruntled employee or if you take some unpopular uh, position uh, or you have a competitor that just decides this is a way that they're going to compete with you. So over time, you know, we think that more and more of the web is going to end up behind Cloudflare and services like Cloudflare in order to make sure that they stay not only secure, but also fast and reliable, available on mobile devices. All of these new challenges which are coming up, we need a new edge of the network, and that's effectively what Cloudflare is building. As the defenders of these various websites, you guys often get caught in the crossfire, right? Um, you, you personally have been subject to some hacking and then Cloudflare employees more generally. Because we stand up for sometimes uh, websites that are very unpopular or unpopular one group or another, uh, sometimes people try to come after us uh, personally in order to in order to knock those sites offline. And so, you know, we have all of us that are sort of leaders in the company have taken uh, pre precautions to protect ourselves. 
uh, and uh, and then and then we've just done things that are sensible in terms of training our employees to expect that because of the fact that we're doing something important and because of the fact that we do find ourselves in the middle of these conflicts, um, sometimes those those conflicts will leak out into other places and it makes sense to take sensible precautions to protect ourselves from, from any of those types of, of real world attacks as well. And you have been swatted, I think you told me before. Yeah, it's the only thing that Justin Timberlake and I have in common is uh, we both had the SWAT team called on our on our homes, which uh, is um, is part of the reason why it's it's harder to figure out where I live these days.